Red Dead Redemption 2 has more than 24 gold bars scattered throughout its wide and expansive map. With each of those gold bars being worth $500 a piece, you can rake in a massive $12,000 in no time at all. In this video, I'll be showing off every available treasure hunt, gold bar, and gold ingot location in the game. But if that wasn't enough, I'll also be discussing a super simple method for spawning unlimited gold, which I'll be checking out a bit later. The first gold bar is one of the most well known, and that's because it's found right next to Horseshoe Overlook. And like most of the treasure shown in this guide, it could be found as early as Chapter 2. When you make your way over to Limpany, you'll find a number of burned out buildings, but the one we're looking for is the Sheriff Office. Once you're inside, you'll need to come behind the desk in the corner here, where you'll find a lockbox stored underneath. Go ahead and pull that sucker out, where upon opening it, you'll find a special horse stimulant pamphlet and of course a beautiful gold bar just ready for the taking. The Limpany location also has a chance of respawning, with some people reporting that they've successfully collected it over 20 times in one playthrough. But in my experience, it's a little inconsistent, so consider trying it for yourself and seeing what you get. But if that doesn't work out for you, it should respawn at least one more time during the epilogue. The gold bar itself can then be sold off at your nearest fence for the tidy sum of $500 dues. But honestly, you might want to wait on that for a moment. There's still heaps of gold we can find right now in Chapter 2. Next up is the Jack Hall Gang Treasure Hunt, and this is going to bring in even more bang for your buck, rewarding your efforts with an impressive two gold bars. You'll first encounter Maximo to the west of Horseshoe Overlook in Chapter 2, where you'll trigger a small cutscene and a conversation with him trying to sell you a treasure map. At first, he'll try to rope $10 out of you, but if you decline his offer, he'll immediately halve the price and you'll only have to pay five. If the mission bugs out, or you happen to scare him away and miss your opportunity to buy the map, you'll be given another chance to purchase it from a fence later in the game. After collecting the first one from Maximo, you'll then need to find another two treasure maps before unlocking the gold bars at the end. With that being said, we'll speed run this next bit and I'll catch up with you when we're at the final location. Alright, with all of the maps now in our possession, we'll need to make our way over to the island in the middle of the lake that I showed you on the map. In my experience, the easiest way of doing that is by getting on your horse and getting him to do the hard work for you. Once you've arrived safely, you can jump off your horse and head over to the big rock formation on the side here. When you get close enough, you'll see a prompt to examine the rock, where you'll eventually flip over a stone, revealing the two gold bars underneath. Go ahead and grab your reward, which will net you a tidy $1,000 dollars for your trouble. You can then just use your horse to get back to land the same way that you got here and we'll continue with our treasure hunting journey. The next location we're going to be checking out is the Strange Statues Puzzles, situated just slightly to the northwest of where we just were. When you arrive, you'll see a small gap in the rock face in front of you, where if you approach it, you'll find that you can make your way inside. This will lead you down a dark passage, which can be slightly illuminated with your torch if you want to get a better look. It won't really matter once you get to the end though, as you'll be presented with a series of statues that represents a puzzle waiting to be solved. Each of the statues has a certain number of their fingers on display, where you'll want to find the values 2, 3, 5, and 7. Honestly though, it's actually pretty hard to see exactly what numbers they represent, so the easiest method is to simply follow along with me. As you approach the statues, you'll want to come over to the one immediately in front of you. 
Here you'll be given a button to push, which will successfully activate the first number in the sequence. You'll then want to skip the next statue and go on to the one after that. Once again, you'll be given a button to push, so be sure to go ahead and do that and move on to the next one. From here, you'll want to go to the very next statue in the rotation and do exactly the same thing as the last two. After that, you'll want to avoid the next statue and instead make your way to the one that comes after that, which will be the last button that you need to press before we can collect the treasure. When you've done it successfully, you'll hear a bell ring and the sound of the statue in the center opening up. Simply approach the statue and circle around it until you see a prompt to collect the treasure within. With a whopping three gold bars located inside, you'll find this to be the best reward that we've seen on this treasure hunt so far. But be sure to stay tuned, we've got a bunch more gold to find in chapter two and we're only just getting started. Next location we'll be looking at is over near Katora Springs, where if you successfully scale a derailed train, you'll be the proud new owner of two gold bars, both of which can be collected as early as chapter two. The process of getting up there looks a little daunting at first, but honestly, it's really not that difficult as long as you just follow along with me while keeping a decent pace throughout. Once you've made it inside the train itself, it's simply a matter of working your way down to the bottom where you'll find a bunch of loot waiting to be collected. But most importantly, you'll find the two gold bars that I mentioned before, which will bring in a tidy $1,000 for all of about two minutes work. Some people say that the gold respawns once per chapter, but unfortunately, I've never been that lucky. In my experience, it will definitely respawn at least once when you get to the epilogue, but maybe consider checking in once every so often and seeing what you can find. Now we're going to be looking at one of the best money makers around and easily my favorite treasure hunt in the entire game. The landmarks of Rich's treasure can be collected in chapter two onwards and will bring in an absolutely insane six gold bars. For those of you counting at home, that's worth an impressive $3,000 edus. And for something that only takes 15 to 20 minutes, you'll struggle to find a better payday than this right here. Same as the previous treasure hunt, it's all pretty self-explanatory. So I'll get back to you at the end of the run. Um... Alright, so after you've attained all four maps, the last thing you'll need to do is make it to the top of the mountain and collect your reward. It can be a little tricky finding the correct path to the top, but if you just follow my route, you shouldn't have any problems. Just make sure you don't overstep when you get to this little ledge and you should be good to go. Once you're at the top, simply make your way over to the sundial in the center and search around until you find a prompt asking you to examine a rock. When you get to the correct location, go ahead and flip the lid and wait for Arthur to collect the goodies inside. As promised, you'll now be in possession of six gold bars, which when sold at a fence will be worth a staggering $3,000. Next up is going to be the Poisonous Trail. This is the second best treasure in the game and will bring in another four gold bars once we complete it. Available anytime from chapter two onwards, you can find the first map up near Coulter where the gang was hiding out at the start of the game. Once you've made your way inside the cabin, grab the lockbox from underneath the bed and crack it open to get the next treasure hunt underway. Including this one, there's a total of three maps for us to collect before we can get access to the gold bars at the end. Same as always, just do what I do in the coming footage and I'll guide you through the final location once we get there.
Alrighty, so now that we've grabbed all three treasure maps and made our way to the Elysian Waterfall, we can head inside the cave and collect the goods. This one's a little more complicated than the last few gold locations we've looked at though, so just follow exactly what I do and I'll speak up with some tips along the way. As you approach this next section, you'll quickly see that there's a sharp drop off ahead. To access where we need to go, we're going to need to jump off the ledge and land on a small pathway down below. If you miss the mark, you'll quickly fall to your inevitable demise, so make sure you scope out the area and be sure of your footing before you jump. As you can see, I didn't run to the very edge of the platform and I only just made it, but thankfully I didn't fall off and I'm able to climb my way to where I need to be. From here, it's a straight shot and all you need need to do is slide down into the briny depths below and eventually climb up onto the rocks that you see in front of you. At this point my camera started getting all janky and looking super weird with the reflections of light from my lantern, but basically once you're up here, the spot you'll need to examine will be directly in front of you. This treasure definitely makes you work for it a bit more than everything else we've seen so far, but once collected you'll be sporting four new shiny gold bars worth another $2,000 when sold over at your nearest fence. The next thing we'll be doing is going after the sketched map treasure. Now in all honesty, this is kind of a baby treasure hunt when compared to everything else we've looked at so far. We'll only be collecting one gold ingot worth $300, but luckily we only have to collect one map and the locations of both that and the treasure itself are really close to where we just were. When you've gone inside the cottage, you'll be looking for a fireplace that looks like this. Head over and interact with it and you'll find the treasure map we need to get the gold ingot, which can be found just around the corner from the finale of the poisonous trail. The exact location can be found over here, where instead of entering the cave behind the waterfall, we'll be searching a spot on land right next to the Elysian pool. The map will tell you to start at a tree and count a certain number of steps to find the treasure, but luckily you don't actually need to do that. Just come over to this rock here and inspect the area where you'll be given a prompt and before too long a shiny gold ingot will be placed inside your satchel. There's a weird bug associated with it where it won't allow you to take it if you already have a gold ingot in your inventory. So if that's the case, be sure to sell it at a fence before trying to collect this one. The next gold bar is a bit unique, where it can only be collected once you've completed a couple of random encounters found over here by Crawdad Willies to the southeast of Rhodes. At some point when riding around the bottom end of Kaliga Hall from chapter 2 onwards, you'll come across a man in distress who will flag you down and ask for your help. He'll tell you that his wife's being held captive by a couple of guys back at their house, requesting that you come to her rescue before it's too late. The best method of finding the encounter is by repeatedly riding between Rhodes and Saint-Denis via the train tracks. Eventually you'll see a white dot pop up on your minimap somewhere in this vicinity here, which will hopefully be the guy you're looking for. When you arrive at the house, be sure to have your gun at the ready and take out the two twat waffles holding the woman at gunpoint inside. You'll then need to cut her free from the bedpost where she'll promptly ask you to dispose of the bodies so they don't stink up the house. We can get rid of them anywhere, but honestly, I like the idea of throwing them in the water and providing some much needed diversity for the local alligator's food supply. Once completed, she'll reward you with $50 when you search the grain bag inside the house and you can go about your merry way. But in order to get the treasure, you'll still need to complete one more random encounter. Luckily, all you need to do is ride a few hundred meters away from the shack and when we return, the next random encounter should spawn almost immediately. There isn't an exact science regarding how far you need to go, but I usually just ride to Kaliga Hall and then back again, which almost always works right away. Once you find it, you'll see a white dot at this tree to the right of Crawdad Willies where we rescued the woman just before. It's another one of those prisoner dealies where the guy will ask you to help him break free from the binds of his shackles, providing you with a small reward for your troubles. In this situation, it's a hot tip for our next gold bar location, which can only be found once you've encountered the prisoner and helped him out. Once you have though, you'll want to come over to just below the letter S in Rhodes 
where if you've done everything correctly, the treasure should be waiting for us. Come over to the three rocks in front of the trees you see ahead, and in the middle of them will be a small interactive stone which can be examined. Unfortunately, for all of that effort, we're only going to receive a single gold bar. And for that reason, I'm not sure it's really worth going out of your way to spawn the random encounters. But once you're in chapter three or four and you're exploring the area naturally anyway, you're bound to come across it at some point or another, at which point it's definitely going to be worth chasing up. Next thing we're going to be chasing is the high stakes treasure, which will be the last gold bars that we can find during chapter two. Once again, we'll be looking for a random encounter, but this time it'll be slightly to the east of the town of Strawberry. Simply ride up and down the path behind me and eventually a white dot should pop up on your map and you'll be all good to go. In my experience, this random encounter is a little easier to find than the last ones and will always be in the exact same location. Either way, you'll be looking for an old man who's also in the business of treasure hunting. Well, that obviously can't stand. This town ain't big enough for both of us, so it's time we give this dude his retirement papers. You can either tie him up and rob him or just take the sure thing and shoot him in the dome. With the first map acquired, the rest of it is going to be just like the other treasure hunts and really shouldn't give you any trouble at all. So I'll just do the usual and get back to you when we're at the final location. Alright, so the treasure can be found on a narrow rocky pathway up ahead, but unfortunately we're going to have to precariously climb on the side of a mountain to get there. It's one of those ones that looks a bit more difficult than it actually is though, so just follow my exact path and you should hopefully get through it pretty easily. When you get to the end of the pathway here, you'll find a weird question mark prompt asking you to search for what's inside. Go ahead and do exactly that, because once you have, you'll find another three gold bars to add to your ever-growing collection. Unfortunately, that'll be it for chapter two, but there's still a bit more treasure to go, which we can find later in the game. The next gold bar can be found over at Braithwaite Manor from chapter four onwards. And for that reason, there is some minor spoilers coming up ahead. So do be warned if you're not up to this part of the game yet. After Braithwaite Manor is burned to the ground at the end of chapter three, you can come back to the scene of the crime and inspect a few interesting changes to the landscape. But by far the best part about it is the tasty gold bar buried beneath all the rubble. Simply follow my path and loop around to the side of the house here, 
where you'll find a little lockbox underneath this piece of wood. Once you pull it out and open it up, you'll find another gold bar for the taking. This is yet another location that has a lot of reports from players saying that they're able to get it to respawn by closing the lid on the box and revisiting the site roughly 10 in-game days later. Unfortunately though, much like the others, I've never been able to get that to work. But if you return during the epilogue, it should definitely respawn by then, and you should be able to get at least one more gold bar out of it. The final treasure hunt will yield another single gold bar, but it can only be accessed during the epilogue, so I've decided to do another spoiler warning for anyone that doesn't want to see what's to come. The first map is a bit weird though. Originally, it was intended for you to find this man suspended from the rock above, where if you shoot him down, you'll be able to search his body and find the first clue from there. But it's technically a random encounter, and for that reason, a lot of players have trouble getting it to spawn. On my dedicated guide video, I had a number of viewers commenting that they were instead able to find the first map by killing and skinning nearby animals, such as snakes, lizards, and birds. To the surprise of many, the map would often then be included within the inventory of items attained from skinning the animal, and they were then able to start the treasure hunt that way. Hopefully, it doesn't give you too many problems, but luckily from here, it couldn't be simpler. Just go along with what I do in the coming footage, and you should find the treasure in no time at all. When you roll up on the final location at the graveyard outside the Coots Chapel Church in New Austin, you'll want to search for a small wooden cross like this one coming up. Laying in front of it will be a collection of small stones, and when you interact with them, you'll be rewarded with the treasure within. It contains a few decent potions, a crow beak trinket, and of course the gold bar that we originally came for. That then rounds out our 24 gold bars available in the game, which will then be sold to bring in an insane 12,000. But if for some reason that isn't enough, be sure to stay tuned because the next thing will have you cashed up for the entirety of your playthrough. Now I'll be showing you a method for spawning unlimited gold. Unfortunately, it can only be done in the epilogue, but it can be a total game changer depending on your situation. First, you'll need to come over to Ridgewood Farm, which can be found to the east of Tumbleweed on the new Austin section of the map. Here you're going to find what looks like a very annoying lockbox, where inside you'll see a bunch of unrelated items with what looks like a gold ingot that can't be picked up by the player. No matter how you manipulate your camera, it just won't let you pick it up. But if you follow what I do next, you'll be able to collect it with very little effort. Come over to the side of the barn here and climb up on top of this structure. From here, you'll be able to jump to the table where the lockbox is, and if you carefully maneuver your way around, you'll eventually be able to kick out the gold ingot. It can take a bit of practice to figure out the best way of doing it, but basically just keep moving back and forth in the vicinity of the gold, and before long you'll see it pop out. At that point, you can get off the table and turn around, where if it's in an acceptable position, you'll finally be given the option to pick it up. Like I say, it might take you a while to figure it out, but once you've got it down, it's honestly super easy. And the best part is, if you jump on your horse and ride just a few hundred meters away, and then return back to the lockbox, you'll find that the gold ingot will have respawned. Much like when we were trying to spawn that mission earlier, there's not an exact science to it, but mess around with how far you ride away, and you should eventually figure out a good system that works for you. You can literally do this until your heart's content. I've heard of people doing it for hours and hours, earning tens of thousands of dollars in the process. Whether or not that's of use to you in the epilogue will depend on how you choose to play the game. But for anyone looking to be the wealthiest man in the West, this is certainly the best way of going about it. That, however, pretty much wraps things up for today, folks. If you found the video useful, tapping the like button down below would certainly be appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to go ahead and subscribe as well. I've got guides on just about everything Red Dead Redemption 2 has to offer, and I've got a bunch of new content on the way very shortly. But until we meet again, you bunch of legends, I'm Red Nitrate, and I'll catch you on the next one. Next one.